In the past few weeks, residents are getting a taste of the impending storm season known as El Nino. While Southern California has not yet experienced torrential rains and flooding, experts say it's still coming. I sat down with Senior Administrative Analyst and Emergency Services Coordinator for the City of Rancho Palos Verdes, Tracy Bonanno, who talks about what you can do to prepare before it's too late. In preparation, be aware of what's going on first. Um, then you might want to think about it because we are in a, I guess, a unique situation here on the peninsula. If a road is blocked, you might want to be prepared to make sure you have, you've gone shopping, you have enough food, enough water, you have something that's going to sustain you um, in your homes um, for long periods of time. It may be a day or two, considering if we do happen to lose a road or maybe it's blocked with debris. Sandbagging is a good thing. Um, the city here at Rancho Palos Verdes, we do have those sandbags available. Um, there's a limited amount. So what you might want to do, now that we're into the rainy season, we're getting into it, now this El Nino, um, you might want to go to Home Depot. Pick up a few of your own uh, sandbags, uh, get them filled up because, you know, L.A. County Fire, they try to provide as many as they can. The city tries to provide. Um, but there's always that backup of having your own and making sure. We do have the sandbagging uh, video that is now coming out. Channel 33 um, locally has it online. Um, and uh, we are pushing that out to let everybody know we have a, a demonstration on how to, how to place your sandbags so they're most effective. Clean those gutters, make sure everything is clear. A lot of rain comes down, maybe there's going to be a little bit of a mud flow or something like that. You need to consider, um, do you need to uh, prep your property as in put those sandbags? Maybe don't just worry about water getting into your home, maybe water around your home. You can try to divert it with sandbags or I'm, I'm sure in uh, more dramatic cases it might be K-rails that they use. You've seen those I think on the news um, lately that they are preparing certain cities, especially in the burn areas, um, that have that flow that they're, they're worried about. I, I think most of our residents are aware of our Portuguese Bend, you know, landslide area. Um, the city's doing everything it possibly can to keep that in place, and uh, they have a close eye on it right now. Well, the flooding you do have to be careful of um, because it's it's very deceptive, actually. I mean, you can see six inches of water on the ground, and it, it may not look like it's moving even. Uh, but there is a, oh, usually a current. Water is coming from somewhere, and it's not just standing there pooling um, during these heavy rain times. So you want to make sure that um, you don't try to cross uh, levels of water that are anything over six inches, you want to test it first. Maybe take a stick, put it in the water, see if it actually has a current and if it's strong. If it's not strong and you feel you can safely cross, then you do. Um, other than that, if it gets anything above six inches, you might want to really consider um, not even driving. Abide by the signs. Um, we also try to push things out through social media too. So the city usually pushes out information about any kind of beach closures, any kind of road closures through Nextdoor, and we have a Facebook account, um, and things like that. So keep your eyes on not just the local news um, in our area, um, but you can also go online and find information as long as you have power to do that. If it's an emergency, you need to dial 911. Call the authorities in, let them know that you do need help. Um, and check your home, your family members, everything else around you, your surroundings, and then stay in place um, until the authorities can get to you. Or if they give you other instructions, then you need to follow those at that time. The website for the city is www.rpvca.gov. And when you want more information about emergency management, there's a emergency preparedness button in the right-hand corner. Click on that and you've got all the information you need. The Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce held their annual economic forecast breakfast at Terranea. One of the nation's top economists was the keynote speaker at the event. Liz Brown Swanson was at the event and joins us now with the story. Liz. The business community and local leaders packed the Catalina Room at Terranea. We are so excited to be back at Terranea again this year for our economic forecast breakfast and installation of our board of directors. Um, we have a terrific, very well-renowned um, national economist, Dr. Christopher Thornburg, the founding partner of Beacon Economics, and he will be sharing with us this morning his outlook for 2016. When you look what's going on in the world today, the stock market's all over the map. There's panics about bubbles. There's panics about China. There's panic about oil prices. Um, and it's amazing to me that... Um, we seem to see this kind of pessimism going on when when you take a step back and look what's going on in the US overall actually things are fine now maybe not as good as we'd want them to be it's been a pretty lousy recovery but on the other side of it sometimes the slow recoveries are the ones that have the greatest longevity and this may end up being one of the longest expansions in US history leading US economist Dr. Christopher Thornburg painted a brighter economic picture despite concerns voiced by some chamber members 
think it is unique right now how volatile things are. I'm involved in the mortgage business, so I'm watching the stock market as well as interest rates and kind of scratching ahead a little bit as to what direction is going and where it's all going to end up at the end of the day. So it is a very interesting to see what he's going to say about the direction the economy is going. Bringing it a little closer to home, what's happening here in California is happening here in Los Angeles. Well, again, good things. California had been written off by a lot of folks, business unfriendly, everybody's fleeing the state. As it turns out, uh, that message is uh, technically incorrect. LA, uh, California overall continues to grow at a much faster pace in the U.S. LA a little slower than most, but then again, LA is an enormous economy. 80,000 jobs added over the last year in a broad variety of industries. Uh, pretty good stuff going on out there. I think clearly things have picked up, obviously. I mean, we're done with the recession. We said that last year. Um, things are on the ups, you know, uptick. Having said that, I think people are still cautious um, because there's so much uncertainty on the global front and businesses don't like uncertainty. It's going to be ups and downs. Nothing is constant and you've got to just hang in there for the long term, whether it's your investment or whether it's anything else because if you take a look at the long term trend, it's always positive. The mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes installed the 2016 board of directors for the chamber. Taranea's president was sworn in as the board's new chair, and she was praised for the resort's success. I'm just here to support her. I'm excited about it. I uh, get the opportunity to install her today. A very special lady, very special place. I mean, there's no place like Taranea. I'm very excited, and this is the 60th year anniversary of the chamber, so I couldn't be more humble and proud to be the leader for this year. And to see the committed business women and men in this room, today is really remarkable. Of course, during today's gathering, there was a lot of focus on the uncertainty of the economy. But one thing is for certain here at Terranea, it was a great Chamber of Commerce day. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. Christ Lutheran Church and School has a foreign exchange program which incorporates students all the way from Korea. John Clayton returns to check up on a school and shows us how the use of social media has impacted the program. We came here a couple of years ago to do an extraordinary story about students from Korea and Norway. And through social media, it has turned into something absolutely extraordinary. Come with me as we go inside Christ Lutheran Church and School to find out more about this intriguing, really a one-of-a-kind program. Well, as a marketing director, I'm, I was so excited to get these calls from Korean parents, and I said, well, how did you learn about Christ Lutheran here in Rancho Palos Verdes? And they said, well, we saw it on Facebook, or we saw it on YouTube from the show that you did here two years ago. In Korea? In Korea, we had uploaded it to our Facebook account and on our a YouTube channel and it's being shown in Korea. It's just the power of social media is just amazing. We totally upgraded everything. Brand new computers. We have Dell computers, Windows 10. Um, Windows 10? We have Ooh. 30 iPads, new furniture. We did the whole thing. We, we did it right. Tell me what, you, what you're learning here. Uh, I'm learning English and computer and history in America and math and ev many things other. I like typing and do, playing games. Do you like to play games on computers? Yes. And what are some of your favorite games? Uh, run or wheel. Really like uh, the car. Uh, I'm moving the car to right way. First of all, how old are you? I'm 13. Wow, she's 13 and she's got all this stuff on her computer screen. Tell me, what, are you, what is all that? Well, we went to a website and we figured out like the pressure and then we put it all into a graph. It looks a lot harder than it actually was. But now, was this an assignment that your teacher yes. gave you? Uh, was there a choice of assignment? I mean, when, when you got the assignment, did you sort of say, oh my goodness, that's, that's going to be very difficult, or yes. was it very, oh, you did? It, it looked, the directions looked very difficult, but then once you actually got to the website and got going, it was really easy. So first of all, Sedona, thank you for being with us. How old are you? I'm 13, in eighth grade. And explain to our audience, investment portfolio, what are you doing with an investment portfolio on a computer? We studied stock markets and we looked at these stock markets and we put them into a graph on 
um, the computer, and we kind of invested our money in. What? Wait, wait, wait a minute! <laughs> you invest your money? It was fake money, oh. and we put it into these cert these fake stocks to kind of see how it works and see how it fluctuates. And we read about these stocks and how they worked. We always have this uh, feeling when when, when teaching <laughs> computers the, uh, to children, it's like, oh, we need to learn this. We need to, you know, do this. No. Kids just go for it. Can you tell me what to do now? Matt. What, what, did, what would I do? Uh, click desktop and it will go to. Um, where there's click like desktop? I, I don't know. Oh, this is covering the word, but it's the black screen. Wait, it's covering the word? Like the yeah, word of it? Yeah, just uh, click right here. Oh. See, I've got all these kids. I mean, here I'm a grown adult and these kids are telling me click that and I'm not quite sure if I'm clicking the right thing. Is, is this really complicated? No. <laughs> oh my dear. Oh, there we go. There we, that's it. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I think I've got it. So that's the secret. I'm going to come to Christ Lutheran School and find out how to use a computer. And all these, wow, look at them all. All these kids are real computer geniuses. And in sports, there is a new head coach for the Peninsula High Panther football team. Coach David Young is a familiar face on the Peninsula because he's been the defensive coach for the PV High Sea Kings. Yes, you heard it right. I caught up with the coach to find out what it's been like to now coach for the Crosstown Rivals. Just coming from being a Sea King to a Panther, how strange does that feel now? It's as strange as it comes. Um, awkward in some sense, but being someone from San Pedro and being a graduate of Mary Star of the Sea High School, I didn't have a true allegiance at uh, Palos Verdes as an alumni. So always knowing Peninsula was the one school when I was in high school, it is really, really a neat opportunity to be able to come full circle to Peninsula and become a Panther now. Um, I still have lots of love for the Sea King faithful and the coaching staff and the boys there, but it is a different change for me to become a Panther, that's for sure. You know, you're you're basically coming into a program that a few months back did not finish the season. Um, they had to forfeit three games. They didn't have enough, uh, enough kids to finish for health reasons. So you're coming into a situation where you have a huge challenge ahead of you. What, what gave you the, the wherewithal to say, I want to take on this challenge? Uh, the word challenge is it. Uh, I love challenges. I love to teach. I'm a teacher first. Coach obviously goes with teacher. But at the same time, when I saw the opportunity to resurrect a program, to give kids a new hope, a new light on something that was taken away from them last year, um, I felt it was almost my calling. Um, I know I can do what the kids want. I know how to do it. As I told my team the other day when I met with them, I was in their position exactly the same in high school, except for we didn't fold the season. We only had 24 guys on our whole team, and I've coached in that situation. So knowing the situation, being involved in that situation as a player and a coach, I felt like I was the right person to take this challenge on, and always meeting challenges head on has been my persona for my entire career. You're, you're from this area, so you remember the days when Panther football was very successful. Um, we, I heard you talking about Coach Kimbrell, who was the first time I came here, he was the head coach. The mentality was different. How do you bring that back? How do you get that, that, that the Panther mentality back to that? Uh, obviously, we got to reintroduce the past first um, and let them know who these boys currently are following. Um, we did that as a whole at Palos Verdes, and we always made sure the current players knew who they had to follow and the job they had to uphold the legacy of the alumni. And I think that's the first thing I'm going to do here is bring in the alumni, have them speak to these kids and say who they are, because Peninsula's got a wide variety of guys who've been in the NFL, college, and not just those high-level achieving athletes, but people who've gone on life as Panthers to do great things. And I think once the kids get a knowledge for who they are, it's going to put a little bit more meaning to what we're going to be doing this year. And of course, it all starts old school. We're going to go back to working really hard, even harder, and then just a little bit harder to make sure we are working hard. And you can watch my entire interview with Coach Young on the February episode of Playing the Field. And if you're looking to adopt a pet in the new year, it's always a great choice to go to an animal shelter. RPV TV's Intern reporter Lisa Baragos takes us to the Carson Animal Shelter where there are many needy animals who need homes. 
Calling all animal lovers. It's a new year and many of us have resolved to giving back more. Well, today we will share a few ways you can contribute towards bettering the lives of some very needy four-legged friends and support a worthwhile cause. I'm Lisa Bergosh and I'm here at the Carson Animal Care Center with Mr. Romeo who is in need of a new home. Let's take a moment and look around the organization and learn a bit more. While euthanasia rates have decreased over the last few years, it is reported that close to 50% of the 72,000 animals brought to the six LA County shelters were killed by lethal injection last year. These facts are hard to hear, but there are ways to be of service to the animals who find themselves in these less than ideal circumstances. According to the shelter, a variety of needed supplies are donated to the animals from various organizations and individuals. Every year, a group of South Bay residents and I hold a charity fundraiser where all proceeds are donated to the Carson Shelter. The goal is to help the animals while spreading awareness and promoting adoption. We have volunteers who do everything from fostering out animals. Um, they have special training to take the neonates or the, the little ones home, and then they could do the bottle feeding and um, get them up to health, usually six or eight weeks, and then bring them back and we make them available for adoption. If you want to take your good deeds to the next level, make okay. this the year you decide to adopt a pet and save a life. Here's your chance to meet three adorable four-legged friends. Available for adoption now. Tell me, how old is little Bashful here? Uh, about eight months, eight months old. And he's a very interesting confirmation. What is his breed? Uh, he's a Dutch hound mix, yeah, and with the pit bull. Now, in your experience working uh, at the shelter, do you find there's a particular breed, like let's say because he is part pit bull, is that going to be a struggle to find him a home more so? No, if no, 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 definitely not. No, it should be actually easier. I have a lady here that is, uh, she's actually sitting in front of his cage every, like every afternoon. She sits with him for about like two hours, two, three hours. And she spends her time giving him treats and, and just spending a lot of time with him. So that, that's, that's dedication, if you ask me. Do you think she'll take him to adopt? Um, yes, definitely. She said yes. Oh, so Bashful has a new home coming up then. Yes, we hope so. Yes, definitely. Oh, babies. How's that sound? That's good news. Yes. Romeo is a year and a half. Uh, he is a terrier hound mix, and he is full of energy, lovable, uh, very calm, uh, but definitely is looking for a great home. And how long has he been here at the shelter? Approximately 10 days. And you think he would be good with children and other pets? I do, yes. He's very gentle, gentle giant. Gentle giant. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Myla. Myla's very energetic. She, right now she's a little you know, woozy right now because she just uh, got out of uh, surgic, uh, surgery. And what is her breed? Uh, she's a, a, a chihuahua mix. How, how big do you think she is? How many pounds? Uh, she's about, uh, I would say, uh, like less than 20 pounds. So she could still be a, a handbag dog? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I think so. A, a big bag. <laughs> when should she be ready? When is her adoption date, available date? Um, I believe it's uh, I think starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Starting yes. tomorrow. Yes. Well, what a day we've had. We were able to witness a very heartwarming adoption right before our eyes, learn a little bit more about how and why the animals end up here at the shelter. And now, if you or anyone you know are looking to add an additional four-legged friend to your family, I hope you'll consider the Carson Animal Care Center. This is Lisa Bergosh for RPV TV. And finally, a local RPV landmark is turning 50 and celebrating all year. The Admiral Risti restaurant has been a Rancho Palos Verdes favorite for half a century, and they're inviting you to join in on the fun. Here is owner Wayne Judah with more on the big anniversary. 50 years, has the time gone by fast? Very fast, yeah. It's uh, a lot of time, um, but it doesn't seem like a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, it's the type of business where I've never been bored. There's always things to do. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah, so tell us about some of the things you're going to be doing for the year, because we're going to celebrate this all year with the Admiral Risti, um, the 50th anniversary. Well, we're going to have a drawing each week uh, that we're going to give away a $50 gift certificate to the restaurant. 
We're going to post uh, that person's name on the board who received it, hopefully their photograph if they're up for it. And uh, we're also, anybody turning 50 this year will get a, a complimentary dessert. Anybody having their 50th wedding anniversary this year will, will also get a complimentary dessert. So we just want to have fun, have a good time, and encourage people to come celebrate with us. Repeat customers is what we depended on. Uh, today, uh, we have several generations from that group. Yes. Uh, where their children's children, you know, up to four or five generations, uh, come to the Admiralty from the same family. So uh, we, I remember uh, at this point some of the original customers were starting to lose because of age. I mean, they're in their 90s now, a lot of them. But their children continue to come in. And uh, so it, it's a tradition now. It takes time to build that tradition. Uh, so after, and this is our 50th year, obviously we have a lot of people. Just recently I had a lady in who had her first date here and she's celebrating her 37th anniversary and she's here to celebrate and she comes every year. So we're important to her in that she remem her first date was here and she's continued to uh, come and have a good time. Let's talk a little bit more about your menu, what you have on it. I know there are a lot of special things. I know that some of the recipes also will be given out to some people. Right. So tell us about that. Well. Ralph's blue cheese dressing and Rusty's flank steak recipes are available here at the restaurant. We also have uh, our chipino dish. That's a very popular item. And uh, we also have the cream brulee recipe, which is another dessert. So we have a little a dressing and a dessert and then a couple of entrees that are available to the public if they'd like. Um, those are all items that are very popular here. And you can learn more about the history of the Admiral Risti and hear what Peninsula residents have to say on our next episode of Around the Peninsula. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.